Hello students, in today's video we will learn about pushing the pawns next to our king to attack opponent when he has castled the same way. The most important principle to remember when using this strategy is that you need center stability and make sure that opponent has no counterplay there. If you push pawns next to your king and the center is blown up by your opponent, your king then will be in danger as his pieces can easily reach your king from the central squares. Now let's take a look at absolutely amazing example. In this position it seems that white is much better because of the space advantage that they have with pawn duo e4 and f4. Usually this in the opening and middle game provides better central squares for our pieces and you can see that white's bishops and knights are deployed a little bit better or they're more centralized than opponent's knight and two bishops. However black is super solid and it's not clear how to proceed from here. And white shows us the way. They decided to attack the opponent's king. White seems to dominate the middle and so flank attacks are possible. So they started with bishop to f5 in order to open up the g-pawn moving forward. After opponent played a move h6, white just goes for the pawn storm. Now if black played bishop g8, white prepared bishop g6, there is a pin so they can't take it. And after rook e7 we would have a similar situation like in the game where white just attacks the black's king. After h6, white played g4, knight to e6, this knight is a very well placed defender and this bishop perhaps is not needed, we just want to accelerate opening opponent's king. And so bishop takes e6 followed by f5 is a perfect method of making our attack faster as we're moving with the so-called tempi or threat. After bishop c4, white plays amazing move. If white just waits to save the rook, for example playing rook to g1, it seems that black has time for king g8. And now of course any move like g5 is simply met by a pawn loss and position has not been opened enough to checkmate or continue the attack against the black's king successfully. Instead, when black attacked the white's rook, white went g5, because right at this moment there is still a pin on the h-file. And the idea of course is that after they take on f1, white is able to take back and after black takes on g5 this time due to the pin we could take on h6 and white is unable to capture back because of our bishop after king to g8 and queen g5 we're still down in material we're down in exchange for one pawn black plays queen f7 and it does seem that black has still a lot of defenders next to our king White, of course, bring everybody to the party. That's one of the main principles. How do we attack? We try to involve as many pieces as possible. After rook d7, however, black still feels super solid. White plays ingenious move b3 in order to prevent the black's queen from coming to c4. Previously, of course, g7 was attacked just too many times and the queen wasn't able to go there. Black played c5, white goes knight to d5, bringing even more pieces to the party until there is a combination available after Black took on d4, white played knight f6, and here, unfortunately, there is no king h8 because of queen h4 checkmate. So they have to give up the queen, and black resigns as they're completely lost. This was a perfect example of using flank attack strategy where we're pawn storming with the same castling on the board because of the center stability and black not having counterplay in the center in order to reach our king. I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.